Hey guys, it's Austin, welcome to your third Roblox Fluid GUI scripting tutorial. I'm going to show you guys how to use images in your games. I'm going to show you how to put them on different bricks and on um, your player's screen. In a screen GUI. So I'm going to get my screen set up here for this. I'm going to insert a screen GUI. And we see here that there's an image label and an image button. I'll insert both of them. So, I'll space them out a little. One, three, okay. Um, so, you guys are, you should be familiar with text labels and text buttons. That's pretty much the same concept of these two. You use an image label like a text label only when you want to display something and not have any interactability with it but with an image button like a text button you want to click it and then it makes something happen it has a lot of the same uh, events and methods as a text button so um, you guys are probably wondering how are you gonna set it to an image you want instead of that big gray R? Um, you go down to image here and you see you have some properties. <coughs> I didn't go over these in the last tutorial, so I will now. I'll go over the important ones. Uh, uh, you probably won't need any of these properties for a while except for image transparency and image property. You might want image color 3 for some reason that changes like sort of like a background color except for the image itself it's weird it's kind of hard to explain but um you click on this image property you see it says rbx asset id colon slash slash and then some numbers i'm going to call this roblox asset id because that's pretty much what rbx stands for and these numbers back here, they're the asset ID of something, of an image, of a decal, a decal, how do we pronounce that, on the Roblox site. So I'm going to control C to copy that to my clipboard. I'm going to go down to the site, and I'm going to go to my inventory, decals, I'll go to an image here. <coughs> Actually, this will work a few go on any sort of uh, item on the catalog or the library whoever you're just gonna uh, delete those numbers at the end and then paste in the things the thing you just copied from the image and it'll say default image um, yeah that's the default image for image buttons and labels and if you want to change that um, let's say we want to put an image of Sonic on a GUI. I'm going to go to develop, click library, and then decals. And you see we have a bunch of different sorts of images to choose from. So let's search up Sonic. Now let's get this image of a derpy Sonic on our GUI. And you're gonna, you want to copy those numbers at the end of the ID to your clipboard with Control C and then press Control V to paste here. And that's weird. It has a big white background and no image. That's because we didn't use the actual asset ID of the image. Um, you can think of this as just not the real asset ID. But what you need to do to get the asset ID is. Um, you're gonna so pretty much subtract one from this big number here and all you have to do is look at the last number so in this case since it's seven we're gonna backspace and type six if it was something like um, zero on the end we'd have to look at the last two numbers and then uh, we see it's 20 so we subtract one that's 19 I hope that made sense to you guys um, so 26 press enter and now we see we have the asset idea of it here so 
Uh, if we go back, it says Roblox decal. <coughs> you want it to say Roblox image, and that's how you know you've had the <coughs> correct asset ID. Sometimes, uh, if you subtract one, it might like go to somebody else's asset that they've uploaded, or maybe some user's place because someone created an account or uploaded something the same time you uploaded a decal. <coughs> or anyone else did but yeah if you if that happens just keep subtracting one until you get to your asset ID so control C delete that control V and now we have Sanic on our GUI uh, same principle for image buttons you just replace the last few numbers with your asset ID and there you go um, that's pretty much how image labels and image buttons work. You might want to set the background transparency to 1 to make it look a little cooler in case you don't want any sort of colored background. I don't know, the design's up to you guys. Um, I'm going to delete those. I'm going to insert a part and show you guys how to use them on bricks. Um, surface GUI. <coughs> Image label. I'm going to set the size to 1, 0, 1, 0, so it covers the whole brick. And then we're going to paste that ID in there. And now we have the picture of Sanic that covers the whole brick. And since we used, um, since we used scale to size it, then uh, then it's going to cover the whole brick so it'll uh, fit the brick's image if you decide to resize the brick or whatever you want to do with it. <coughs> image button. Asset ID. Uh, I'll leave it like that for now because I want to show you guys something. Uh, yeah, you see how like a regular text button on the screen GUI. Well, it doesn't have to be on the screen GUI, but like a regular text button, when we mouse over this, it gets a little darker to show that it's a button and that something happens when you click it. So, I'm gonna make. Um, script here that uh, okay script up here and dot mouse button one click connect function print hello world I'm gonna demonstrate something very important to you guys here um, of six test mode now this should print high to the server console you know uh, F7 and now we have a server and a client not just a client because I use a server script I prefer to have that server window open so it shows in the output here I'm gonna go back in a second once I click on this and check if it printed hello world clickety click didn't print anything so our script didn't work and I'm gonna show you why so say you have <coughs> some big brick just like this and you have a bunch of different text buttons on it say they're supposed to make supposed to when you click on and make some players uh, get a prompt for a game pass purchase or something on their screen that's not going to work unless you use this property called Adorni. And I'm going to show you guys what that is exactly. <coughs> Sorry for the coughing. I've been feeling a little sick the past couple of days. Then again, it feels like I've been sick all winter. I'm mean, moving on. You see, you search up Surface GUI on the wiki, and it has a note outlined in red. 
surface GUIs must be descendants of player GUI in order to know the player who is interacting with it. Uh, so what this pretty much means is your code isn't really going to work on this if it's not um, if you never had it in starter GUI to begin with, if it's always been in workspace. That might sound confusing, but I'm going to show you what I mean. We have this property called Adorni uh, with a type of base part. It sets the object that the surface GUI is adorned to. In other words, this defines which part the surface GUI is attached to. So we're going to make our script work now. Uh, we're going to move that to starter GUI. Then local script local uh, no uh, yeah local image equals script dot parent wait for child image button image dot adorny equals game dot workspace dot part dot part dot surface GUI. Pretty sure it's not surface GUI. Let me see. If this works, then we should see the image button on our part here. The door is not a valid number of the image button. Yeah. Alright, that's because it has to... We need to use the surface key here, okay. I forgot that Adorni was a property of surface GUI and not image button. That was a mistake. <coughs> now let's look at this. Yeah, that's weird. Sometimes in your game, uh, your surface GUI might pop up somewhere random like that. I don't really know why it does that. Surface GUI is not a valid number of part. I bet I still had. Yeah. That's why I didn't do that. Yeah, and now it's on our screen. On our part. Open up the output. Click it. Now it printed Hello World because without setting its Adorni from player GUI or starter GUI no code is gonna run on that you can't add interactability to it so that's something important to keep in mind if you wanna have interactable surface GUIs in your game <coughs> that might stand the same for billboard GUIs I don't know cuz I don't use them that much but if you wanna add an image uh, with the billboard GUI it's pretty much the same principle as everything we just did with the surface and the screen GUIs. So I think that's all you guys need to know for today. If you guys want to uh, want me to make a video on doing anything extra with these you might be wondering about, just uh, leave a comment, send me a message. If you guys have any questions, do the same. Until next time.